I'm Obi. This is Obi's Crafts and Stuff. And I'm going to show you how to make spinners like this. Catch bass like this. If you're like me and you like making things and you like fishing, the best way to bring the two together is to start making your own lures. I've been watching YouTube videos and I really enjoy watching people make their own fishing lures and then going out and catching fish with something that they made. I think that's a way to take your fishing experience up to the next level and make it even more enjoyable. Since I started doing this, I started with spinner blades. I've also been carving my own things and trying to make uh, like molds out of them. So far these have mostly been a failure. Uh, the, the spinner blades, or the inline spinners, there's definitely a learning curve to it. I spent most of the summer working on them and making different variations of them. So hopefully in this video, if you follow what I've done, that'll get you past all of the mistakes that I've made. A little spoiler warning, the fish that I caught in the intro, I did catch on a lure exactly like this, but I don't have it on my GoPro footage. I actually ran out of memory card, but I do promise I caught that fish on a blade, a spinner bait just like this. It's definitely very rewarding when you catch a fish of that size on something that you've made. These have been very successful for me this summer and I will continue to make them. I think these inline spinners are a good place to start if you're like me and you want to make your own baits but you don't really know where to start. The, the startup cost on these are actually a little high but once you have that initial investment you have enough material there to make a hundred lures probably. Another thing I like about making inline spinners like this, everything I need to make these spinners is in this tackle box. So you could essentially, if you wanted to, you know, if you were fishing with these spinners, you could just take this box with you. And if you think that something like this would work, but you don't have one made up, 10 minutes later, you can whip one of these up on the boat, on the shore, wherever you're at, and have one with you. You have all kinds of options in this box now. And I really enjoy that about these baits. The next part of this video, I'm gonna go into some detail on how I make these flies or, or dressings, whatever you wanna call it, rooster tail even. Uh, it's a little in depth. So if you're not really into that, go ahead and skip to this time right here. And it'll just be a brief summary of the bait and then we'll go on to the actual fishing part of the video. Okay, so to start, I've already got a treble hook tied on to the regular bait hook. I get these bait hooks because they got the, the bait holder hooks. They have these little tabs on the back. It's supposed to hold worms, but they also help to keep the fishing line kind of in place so it doesn't slip all the way down. I like to keep the trailer hook just a little bit past the bend in the main hook. If you make it too long, this thing's going to start flying around everywhere and you're going to get tangled up on yourself a lot. But right there is pretty good. I've got it tied on with 50 pound braid. 50 pound braid is definitely overkill, but for this, I'd rather it be a little too strong than too weak. Plus I have 50 pound laying around, so that's what I'm using. Now, I'm no expert in tying flies or anything like that, but this is how I've been doing it, and it, so far it works great for me. The string I'm using, I got from the local fly fishing shop. This is a G weight string. It's their heaviest that they carry. So far it's been strong enough. Every now and then you'll get a break when you're tying. But as far as actually using them out in the field, there's no problems. So you just lay the string on and then wrap it. And I like to come all the way down here to at least this first bait catch and that'll help keep the trailer hook from moving around too much. I've been using this water-based cement just dab a little cement on to get it kind of fixed in there. Cut this tag end off. Now I'm going to add some flashing. This is a gold flashing. It's Orvis. I usually just take three or four strands and put them kind of close together. I'll cut the tag ends off here and then they're all pretty even when I put them on the hook. Main thing is you just want to stay under the eye. If you start covering the eye up, it will obviously create problems later on. I 
Another key thing is you don't want to go too much farther past the end of your trailer. If you do, a lot of your bites are the tail end and you're going to have a lot of misses. So I only try to go maybe a half inch or so past the trailer, if that. So about right there, it's pretty good. I'm going to do it one more time. Once you get it started, you can kind of hold it down in the direction that you want it and that'll keep it pretty much where you want it to be. It helps spread things out. And we'll save this for later. Add a little more glue. Next we're going to add these feathers. They're kind of a green and black. It says bugger pack on the back of it. So, like I said, I'm really no fly fisherman, so I don't really know correct terminology and what these things are actually for. I just know what I'm using for and they work good. Just take a couple of them, about like that. So I'm just going to cut them out with some scissors so I don't ruin them. Like I said, you only want to go a little past your trailer hook or you're going to get a lot of misses. That's probably good. These two are a little long, but I don't think that'll matter too much. So you mark them with your fingers, put them just below the eye, start wrapping. Dab on a little more glue. Next I'm going to put on these saddle hackles. This is a furnace color. I think they're actually just like pheasant feathers. I don't know. They look pretty cool. But these will be the same. Mark them out how, how long you want them and cut them. I don't want these to cover up all the green underneath. But I am going to put these on a little heavy. So they'll go about right there. Which is real close to the end of the trailer hook. When you put them up on the hook, you can kind of twist them around and that'll help spread them out and curve them around to make the body. Once all those are on, I'll put more glue on. Pretty much in between every layer, I put at least a little bit of glue. I think that helps make everything pretty solid. Next, we're going to put on the rest of this flashing that we saved from earlier. We should be able to get at least two more sections of it on. I think this helps give the whole lure some depth. These ones here, will they'll kind of fray out and stay kind of out the whole time. And again, more glue. The last thing we're going to add is some deer hair. This one is, this is dyed green. I try not to go too heavy with the deer hair. I try to just get little pinches and kind of wrap it around. And then that'll help blend everything together really well. I actually think I went a little too light on that first pass. Now that I've got all the deer hair on that I want, before I finish wrapping it all, I'm going to add even more glue. And I think this helps pack all that glue in. The main thing to keep in mind too on this when you're finishing wrapping is just stay out of the eye as best as you can. Now that we got it wrapped all the way, we're going to we're going to finish tying it up. I got the quick whip tool. Take it like this and hook it. Bring that bottom around that piece and kind of just hold on to the handle. Put the tag in going down the lure. And you're going to have that little four and just wrap it around and 
I like to go probably overkill on these. Then whenever you have enough wraps, you want to leave the hook on, but keep a little tension on the tag end and let it pop off while the hook is still holding. Pull up on the tag end and that brings that hook in. And then once you're up there, unhook it, pull it a little tight and it's knotted up. And we'll tie a few extra little knots here they're definitely not necessary, I don't think, but they make me feel better about it. Cut the tag end and dab some more glue on. Now we'll let that dry. While this is drying, we can go ahead and get started on the actual blade and bead body part of the lure. For this part of the lure, we will need a wire. This is looped on one end already. A blade, a clevis, two beads. These are just craft store beads. They're plastic. They work fine, except they start getting banged up a little bit and the, uh, the paint will kind of rub off. And a lure body. When we start putting this together, I always use the factory looped end as the head of the lure. So everything kind of comes towards it. You want to put a bead on first. Then you'll take your clevis and put inside of the blade. This is the cup side, and it's the side that you want going towards the head of your lure. So it'll go on like that, followed by the other bead and the body. So that's how the body will look. Now we need to put the loop on the other end of the body. You could easily do this with round nose pliers like this. But I've been doing this for a little while now, and I invested in this. It's a Boggs tackle maker. I just think they look a lot more professional, which I'm not really selling these, but it's a detail that I want. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit of the tag end off because this clamp is in the way here. Now, I just put this in down here. And usually, the length of this is the length that I want to keep. So I'll just put it in like that, twist this loop around, and it gives you that. Now you turn the lure around, put the end that you just bent towards the stopper here, and then bring that finger around and just kind of nudge on it a little bit. Now put your bend in line. Now before I was putting split rings on and I have found that that gives the the hooks way too much movement and you're going to have a lot of casts where the hooks actually wrap around and catch your line and then it ends up just being a wasted cast you're fouled up it's a pain in the butt. So I've eliminated the split ring and I just put the hook directly on here now. With that, you put this in, put the body part in the groove here, and your looped end goes around that finger. Slide this around, there's another slot on the back side of this. And we're ready to turn. I always keep pressure on, that way it keeps the loop kind of up and tight against that finger and it helps keep from twists. I usually give it three or four good twists here. We end up with that. Cut the tag end off with some snips. Now you get that little finger which isn't a big deal, but if you grab onto it with a fish, you're going to get cut. So I just take other pliers, give it another little twist. Still have a little bit, but it's not near as bad. With that, we have a finished lure. Now with most spinners, you know, you're going to get panfish, small bass, but the total length of this lure is about four inches. This will definitely draw out some of the big bass. 
So in summary, this bait is about four inches long. It's got a single hook and a treble stinger hook on it. Two beads. This blade is a number three brass blade and a brass body. The hook is just looped in to the wire. There's no split ring or anything. For the next part of the video is the, the fishing segment. Every fish caught in the video was either caught on a inline spinner exactly like this, or there was one with a silver body and it had like black and red and brown feathers on it. But everything in this video was caught on a spinner bait that I made. And I'll leave you with that. Happy making and good luck fishing. Good one. Caught on my own spinner. Bass like this. All right, switch it over to the camera. 